In the following demo, I will demonstrate how to extract data from OpenDetect into a Python environment, in this case, Jupyter Notebook, but also other environments like Spyder are an option. These environments are shipped with the latest version of OpenDetect software and can be started from within OpenDetect itself. Note there are also several other options to implement Python code in OpenDetect as well, such as the external attribute found in the OpenDetect attribute engine. Here we will concentrate on working in a Jupyter Notebook and setting up a connection to OpenDetect from there. Now why is this important? The ability to use code makes you a more powerful geoscientist. You can integrate between data types that are not supported in a single software application. You can implement ideas from recent publications or make your own preferred workflow extensions with tools that are not found in the software. And the list of advantages is much longer. One of the showstoppers doing such is often that data I.O. is complicated. You need to read data from a software database whose storage formats are not known. In OpenDetect, it's a side product of the new machine learning tools. It is possible to easily lift well data from the OpenDetect database and bring it into an Python environment. The work done in the notebook can be machine learning related, but can of course also involve other domains. In the following demo, I will show an example calculating netto gross ratios for a prospective interval, a calculation that is not easily done in OpenDetect. This is followed by another example, applying principal component analysis followed by a clustering. Note that the application related code here is relatively simple and generic and not fully appropriate for proper geoscience analysis in the current form. However, the focus is on retrieving data from OpenDetect and restoring data into OpenDetect, with the intermediate applications just asserted to complete the example. Let me start by showing where in OpenDetect the Python editor and environment can be started. First, there is a settings window that can be accessed by clicking the icon with the two Python snakes. Here, among others, you can set your Python environment and select your preferred Python IDE. In the icon next right, you start the IDE. In my case, that would start Jupyter Notebook. Before switching to the notebook, one word about the dataset. The dataset used is the dataset released is a dataset released by the New Zealand government for public use. I've never worked much with this dataset yet, so my code will contain typical reconnaissance tasks to get to know the dataset better. So let's switch to the Jupyter Notebook. For those who are not familiar with the Jupyter Notebook, this is a tool where code can be easily divided in cells like this and this, where code can be executed per cell. Intermediate markup cells, like this one, can be added to add clarifications or supporting material. It is an ideal format for scientific work, combining theory with code applications, or for demos. In explaining the notebook, I will skip through the crowd details and explain the main purpose of each step. A version of this notebook will be published and code details can be studied later at your leisure. In the first code cell, we use some Python modules I like to use later. A few settings are set as well. In the next code cell, we import ODPy, specifically the Wellman tool. This is the Python library created by DGB that allows easy access to the OpenDetect well data. We use this right away to interrogate the well database with get names and get the names of the wells available, which we store in a list. Next, I check the well tracks. First, to verify whether any of the wells are deviated. This is done by looping over all wells and invoking the get track function. Per well, it outputs a tuple of lists representing measure depth, true vertical depth, the x coordinate, and the y coordinate. 
By verifying the coordinates, it is seen that all wells have a strictly vertical trajectory. In the next code block, I reorganize the data a bit, so it provides easier access to the surface coordinates and terminal depth, which I will need later. Next major task is retrieving the well logs. Two common problems with well logs is that, there are that not every well will have the same collection of log types. Another is that even the same log type may be listed under slightly different log names in different wells. The solution here is to first load the names or mnemonics of all logs per well with the get log names function, like so. And it provides me a dictionary which for each well a list of all log names. Then for the log types that are of interest, density, sonic, gamma ray, deep induction, the spontaneous port uh, potential, uh, a dictionary of aliases is created. If an alias is encountered, the log is imported to the Python environment with the get log function. Like this. Let's run it. At the same time, a list of missing logs is maintained. This is important, for example, as many machine learning applications need to have a constant set of input features. It is seen that some wells do not have a sonic log, like this one, and others do not have a spontaneous potential log. This will be imported again in one of the later applications. Finally, all logs loaded are converted to a pandas data frame which is then stored per well in a dictionary. This is more convenient for later handling. We do a quick visualization of the MAUI 5 data frame and a log, the density log from the MAUI 5. Note that in a proper analysis, you would spend more time screening the logs and QCing for possible problems. In this demo, we carry on to some geoscience analysis. To do that, we load for each well all well markers with the get markers function. Again, we loop over all the wells and then apply the get marker function. As I was new to this dataset, a first task was to learn a bit about the prospective geology. After a brief internet search, the deeper Capuni group seemed a good object for analysis, with a classic sequence including call layers. The next piece of code, code extracts the zone of interest for each well, going from Capuni to the next well marker or to terminal depth if no next well marker is present. The upper and lower boundaries of the zones of interest are written for each well in the dictionary as written out below the cell. Now we set some log cutoffs that could be indica indicative for reservoir quality sense. At this point, this analysis is not precise. The cutoffs, zone of interest limits, and logs are combined, and for each well, a gross thickness of the Capuni group, the net thickness of the possible reservoir, and the net to gross ratio are calculated. The results are then displayed in a scatter plot representing a map, with circle size representing the gross thickness and the circle color representing the net to gross ratio. Groupings of poor and groupings of richer locations are easily recognized. As OpenDetect does not really hold a structure for this sort of data, one way of integrating this data back in OpenDetect is use safe images, as I have done here. We can then go to OpenDetect and load the image to have this map available in OpenDetect. If you have OpenDetect Pro to your availability, the best place to do that is into the base map. To the base map tree, you find the image item where you can add images. Select 
the stored image. And then I have to provide the corner coordinates associated with this image, which I know from my notebook. After the copy paste operation, I have now displayed this map in my base map of OpenDetect. Another way to integrate this data back into OpenDetect is export the net to gross ratio as a short log covering the Kapuni group. OpenDetect has a quite easy import format called pseudo less, which requires a header in quantity unit format with a unit between brackets and spaces between the different quantities. Under the header, the data is then stored as columns of ASCII data. Details are displayed here in the markup cell. We can run this and export the pseudo last using the NumPy safe text facility. The output of that looks like follows. A header and a column with depth values and a column with net to gross values, which are fairly constant here. One can pick these subsequently up in the Open Detect Well Manager using the import facility. And search can one load the log. I won't do it here, I already have done it. If I display the wells here, My gross is represented by the height of the cylinder and through rainbow colors with the hotter colors representing higher net to gross values. The net to gross values are represented. And we see clearly that there is a different seismic character where I have poor net to gross, which is kind of lower amplitude and more regular versus high net to gross, which has a slightly less regular uh, character and contains higher amplitudes in between. This is good news as far as seismic characterization of this interval. So to stay on team, I will finalize with a simple machine learning related example. Here we will use the data to apply a principal component analysis and the clustering, and then put the results back in OpenDetect. For people unfamiliar with principal component analysis, this is a very basic method to reorient the data cloud, a clay data cloud, into new axes ordered from more significance to less significance, with the most information from the data set stored in the most significant axis. It is thus a method to reduce dimensionality of the data. Important here is that we select wells that all have the same log set. Here we use density, sonic, gamma ray, and deep induction. In this code cell, I make sure that I have selected the wells that have all these logs available and have the well marker that indicates the zone of interest. This is the list of those wells. For these wells, we store all data values in one master pandas frame. We do that here.
In the next step, we screen the data for undefines to filter these out. The undefines are represented by a very large number here. After they have done, done that, we convert the data to a NumPy array. And using that NumPy array, we create the principal component transform. We then train a k-means clustering, one of the most simple clustering algorithms, to this data. After the k-means cluster training has been completed, I will visualize the result of it. Here we see a plot with the first principal comment component on the x-axis, the second on the y-axis. The detected cluster centers indicated by these crosses and the cluster boundaries indicated by these lines. For good measure, I will use another plot to investigate what these class centers potentially mean in terms of petrophysical parameters. Here we see a 2D histogram displayed as a contour plot and 1D histograms where uh, the different classes are displayed on the density dimension and the gamma ray dimension. For example, we can say C that class number 5 represented here with low gamma ray and relative low density values probably represents a class of high quality reservoir sands. We have done this general analysis on all data points. We can apply this analysis per well and export it back to OpenDetect using the pseudo LAS export route. We do this all in one cell. Some elements that you see here is the header line we're going to use later for the pseudo well export. Some data extraction or organization, as well as applying the principal component transform and the clustering. Reorganizing all the data in a single NumPy array that can be exported using the NumPy safe text uh, facility with this data and uh, with this header line. So when we do that, we create a pseudo LAS file with all principal component results as well as the cluster results. After export, we can quickly inspect the pseudo LAS files like here, we see six axes. The first are six header values. First header value represents the depth index. Then the four principal components we created, and then the clustering we created with the k means clustering. We can pick this up again in OpenDetect using the manage wells. Go to the well. We import, uh, select the import button, select the pseudo LAS file, verify all the entries are there, and import. Now I don't want to mo import more. Let's review the clustering. AC that we have four classes, and then below a certain depth. The locks are not all locks necessarily are available anymore. And that concludes my demonstration. In summary, I have extracted different sorts of well data from OpenDetect. Use Python code and Python libraries to do some analysis and processing in the Python domain. And then used images and pseudo LAS files to return the new data to OpenDetect, which is the central application for seismic interpretation. If you have further questions, please let us know.